Let's continue on with Chapter 1 with Lesson 1.4. Rewrite formulas and equations. A formula is defined as an equation that relates two or more quantities. The formulas on the right I hope are familiar to you. We have distance formula, area for both triangle, rectangle, and a circle. We have perimeter for a rectangle and circumference. The definition of the variables are all listed on the right. Our goal in this lesson will be to take a formula and rewrite it, isolating one particular part. The plan will be to use PEMDAS backwards. Let's try a couple. Use the circumference formula and solve for r. The definition for circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times r, where r is the length of the radius. If we start by writing that formula out, c equals 2 times pi times r, and we're asked to isolate the r variable, the 2 and the pi are both being multiplied. To move them to the other side, we will simply divide. If we do that on the left side, excuse me, on the right side, we also have to do that on the left side. On the right, the 2's cancel out and the pi value cancels out. With our variable isolated, we would rewrite this formula as r equals capital C for circumference divided by 2 pi. We all know not every formula is going to be that easy to work with, so let's try a different one. It says use the perimeter formula and solve for w. Then find the width of a rectangle that has a length of 12 and a perimeter of 41. The first thing we're going to do is use the perimeter formula and solve. If we take the perimeter formula, capital P equals 2L plus 2W, I like to write my L as kind of like a cursive L, just so that it doesn't look like a 1. You can write your L whatever works best for you. Our plan is to isolate the W. We need to get this part by itself. I'd like to start by moving the 2L to the other side, and we'll do subtraction to make that happen. P minus 2L, they're not like terms. That means it stays that subtraction problem. Oh, my L isn't looking very good here. Hang on, let's fix that. There's my cursive loop. There we go. All right, we're good. On the right, the 2Ls eliminate, and then we have 2 times W. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. To get W by itself, it seems reasonable to divide by 2. And that's true. That's what we will do. On the left-hand side, though, make sure to put everything over 2. It's important at this point to note that the numerator, that top fraction, should go in parentheses. That way we don't do something like this and say, if we cross off that W, or we want to say it like this, I'm sorry, we want to say that P minus 2W or divided by 2 is the only answer. It's not okay to do this. That doesn't work. So just be careful on that. I know it looks like there's a 2 on the top and the bottom, but it doesn't work because of the parentheses. And if we think order of operations, we have to remember parentheses first before you do the division. This is the final answer for W. And then it had a 2 right there where the word then is. Scribble that 2 out. There's no 2 for that part of the problem. I'm not quite sure why it was there, but sometimes that happens. We are going to make quite a few changes to this lesson, by the way. Some of the directions are going to be modified. At any rate, it says find the width if the rectangle has a length of 12 and the perimeter is 41. So kind of for the second part over here, we're going to say if the length is 12 and the perimeter is 41, the nice thing about isolating W in the first part of the problem is now we can just plug in 12 and 41 on the right-hand side. We would know then that W equals 41 minus 2 times 12, and again, that's all in parentheses divided by 2. See if you can simplify that. Once you've finished, press play, and then we'll go to the next one. Hopefully you got either 7 halves, or 17 halves meters or 8.5 meters. With that order of operations, we, just, or we multiply the 2 and the 12, but then we have to subtract the numerator before we divide by 2. If you don't do that, you definitely end up with a different result, so be careful with those parentheses. I would take your answer in either fraction form or simplified decimal form. 
down at the bottom where it says rewrite an equation. You'll notice that I crossed off example B. It's no longer on my sheet. You're welcome to cross that off as well. We're not going to do that problem. However, I would like you to add on the directions that are written in pink. Solve for y, then solve for y when x equals 8. We're going to solve for y first and then plug 8 in second. To get y by itself in this equation, we want to isolate our variable right there. To move that 9x to the other side, we will subtract it. We're going to get lots of negatives in this one. Leaving us on that left-hand side with negative 4y. On the right, 7 minus 9x, they, not, they are not like terms. That means we have to leave it like that subtraction problem. And now to get y by itself, the negative 4 is right next to the y, which means it's being multiplied to y. For our purposes to isolate the variable, we have to divide by that coefficient. We'll do the same thing on the right-hand side. And this is a good indicator, just like that problem up above, to remember that the 7 minus 9x has to be done first before you divide by negative 4. The negative 4 is eliminate on the left. We have y isolated. In fraction form, 7 minus 9x all over negative 4 is what we get when we isolate y. It says then solve for y when x equals 8. For that second part, we'll plug in 8 for our variable. y equals 7 minus 9 times 8, and that all goes in parentheses, divided by negative 4. Again, you can do this part. Pause the video, simplify this, and leave your answer as a simplified fraction. Press play when you're done. If you multiply the 9 and the 8, you should get 72. 7 minus 72 is negative 65. And if you divide negative 65 by negative 4, really the only thing you can simplify is that the two negatives cancel. And your final answer is positive 65 fourths. For the last part of our video lesson, we're going to modify the directions once again. On the left side, please write use the distributive property backwards. That's going to be kind of our game plan for the two equations on the right hand side. You'll notice I wrote solve for y in that first example, and then in the second one I rewrote the directions and said solve for c. And notice they don't have c and d with them, so there isn't a letter in front of each of the equations. Please make those changes, and I apologize for not having that done for you in advance, but we'll work with it. All right, so let's take that first equation and solve for y. If we have 2y plus xy equals 6, notice the y variable is in both of the terms on that left-hand side. But they're not like terms. We can't add the 2 and the x together. Now it says on the left-hand side, use the distributive property backwards. That means we're just going to see if we can take something out that both of the terms share. We talked about this in our algebra review worksheet on that second day of school, but it's been a while. Notice that both of these terms have a y in common. That would be the same as if we use the distributive property and had y on the outside. If y would be on the outside, then the 2 and the x would both be on the inside. Take a minute to think about that. So if we use the distributive property backwards, instead of multiplying parts together, I'm taking parts out of each term. And the reason why you can do that is now you have just one variable with y instead of the two terms that have the y variable. And if you have just one y variable, you can get that by itself simply by moving everything else to the other side. If y is technically being multiplied by that parenthesis, all we need to do is divide by that parenthesis. And we end up with 6 divided by 2 plus x. Now on the left-hand side, that all goes away because the y was on the outside of it y equals 6 over 2 plus x. And that's getting your variable isolated. So in this one, both the variables were on the same side. But in that next example, we've got variables on both sides of the equation that we're trying to isolate. So let's see. Please make sure to include the directions at the top, write solve for c, and then cross off that d that's on the left-hand side of it. That's just a lot of letters that look the same. And we have enough to try to figure out what to do here. 
If you have two terms that have a variable in it that you're trying to solve for and they're on different sides of the equation, we need to get both terms on the same side before we can do anything else. Please write get both terms with C on the same side. And we'll do that simply by adding or subtracting. Well, that's the same right there. That's a big A. There we go. Same side. All right, to move this 3C over, since I already have that D on the other side, I'm going to just move that over by subtracting it. If you have CD minus 3C, even though they have a C in common, they're not like terms. Therefore, we write it out kind of like what we did before as just a subtraction problem. On the right, the 3Cs cancel, and we're left with negative 4D. Again, lots of negatives on these. Just like that last problem now, if we have a variable that we're trying to solve for, and it's in both of those terms, let's apply the distributive property backwards. So this would technically be the same as if C was on the outside, and now D minus 3 was on the inside. And if we distributed C in, we would have C times D minus 3 times C, so just like the part up above. Now, though, we have just one variable to try to solve for instead of having it in two places. Technically, it's C times that parenthesis. We're just going to divide again. Keeping that parenthesis in check, therefore, our order of operations will be in great shape. There we go. Oops, I don't need that line there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll draw the line in the last, answer, in the last part of the answer. C equals negative 4D over the quantity D minus 3. And that's getting your, iso or your variable isolated by using the distributive property. We'll end the video lesson here and do the application problems in class.